This is George Dion of the Rock is George podcast, and this is a KNAC.com exclusive interview with drummer Stet Howland of the classic rock act Freak Show. If I knew absolutely nothing uh, about Freak Show, how would you describe the band's music to me? Well, I mean, uh, at a glance, I'd say it's like it's groove, groove arena type rock. You know, it's got that uh, it's all heavy grooves and heavy harmonies and beautiful hooks. Ronnie just put some beautiful uh, hooks together. I mean, really, really good. And the guitar work speaks for itself. I mean, we got, you know, Ronnie's riffs are fantastic. And we got Carlos Cavazzo, a student of Randy Rhodes, guitar god from Quiet Riot. I mean, seriously? I mean, <laughs> seriously. And you know what? He's an amazing guy. But the band, it's, it's you know, it's a rock and roll band. It's a metal, you know, rock and roll, not hair metal, but it's a groove metal band and uh, beautiful harmonies. Uh, you know, Def Leppardish, you know, I don't know. It's a, a departure from Metal Church where, you know, we, we really revisited Thrash. So, and I, and I did this record right after the Metal Church record. So I came in, you know, I, you know, I was like, I was just ripping. And then I got to this. So it was two different approaches. Freak Show released their first album in 2009. It was their self-titled debut. Originally, right. the band was vocalist Ronnie Borsher. Uh, the late Jeff it, yeah. Labar, uh, the late Frankie Benali, and Tony Franklin on bass. Uh, today, it's yourself, Ronnie Boucher, still there, Carlos Cavazza, Greg Chessain. How did you get involved in the band? Um, well, I, uh, I'll i add that Rick Fox has now come in to do live shows, and uh, Greg, Greg Chason wasn't able to um, participate in the live stuff because there's so much going on. And uh, so we pulled in Rick Fox, and uh, he's the one in the videos. He's doing a great job. I, I got pulled in through Ronnie. Ronnie's been my friend for many years. And, um, you know, we, we've, we, we've recorded together in the past. I played on his Amsterdam record some years ago. Uh, and we always threatened to do stuff. And uh, at the end of the day, he would go, you know, because Frankie was right there and a legend. He would, you know, Frankie ended up doing this stuff, you know. Um, and... But this time around, Ronnie's like, man, this is it. It's our time. We're going to do a record. I'm like, damn right. And uh, while I was doing the metal church, you know, we were working our asses off on that. He's like, okay, I'm ready to go. And I'm like, bro, I'm not quite ready, you know. And he sent me all the tracks. So the second I was done with metal church, I took like a few days off. And then I then I banged this out. And it went quite quick, you know, because I had been listening to it the whole. It took me like five months to do the metal church record because we were really writing and stuff. And we were, we were trying to make a strong comeback record. So, we, you know, we were testing and retesting and you know, replacing songs. And it was a long process. You know, it's a pain in the ass. Probably the most painful record I've ever done in my life. And then, but during that time, I was listening to the Ronnie stuff and um, it was just getting in my soul and everything. So by the time I came to tracking, I was in physically such great playing shape that I was, you know, I wouldn't, everything I played was a keeper. It was just a question if you lied, like what I played, Apples and Oranges. And I banged them out, uh, the record, all the songs in like three takes. You know, I, I, you know, I did two or three songs a day um, and I did the whole record in like in a week, you know, week or week or 10 days, you know, and uh, it came out beautiful. The grooves are nice and and, and uh, nice and big and, you know, so, somewhat somewhat inspired by where Frankie led it in the old days with, because he's just a groove monster, you know. And um, of course, you know, Tony Franklin's a good friend of mine, you know, so the, the Freak Show family's always been bros, you know. Uh, I love Jeff Labar. Frankie Vanelli was a bro. I just adored him. You know, we were always really close. And um, so, yeah, it's just a big love fest, really, you know. And and, uh, and and we did the record. And the Sioni Records is just really great. They've done everything that, that they're supposed to do. Um, they're nice, you know. <laughs> They've done two videos, good promotion. They make crazy pr promo. I even got my own guitar picks, you know. So everybody's really going for it. And uh, the vibe's good. And now we're starting to get offers for live shows. And that's my department. You know, I, I, so we're just starting to feel those offers. And um, I'm sure we'll, you'll see some gigs eventually. Not a ton. You know, no one wants to do a ton of gigs anymore. But we're going to cherry pick some good ones and get on some bills with friends and stuff like that. You know. So do you think a project like this would have been possible if you didn't have, like, downtime from the pandemic? Uh, yes. This, this, pro this project actually slipped in right after the pandemic when I was back to hard work and my ass off. So it's like, um, yeah, it was going to happen. You know, I make things happen, man. I don't mean to sound, I know it's like a, a pompous ass or anything, but it's like when, when people present opportunities to me or a good idea, 
I'm good at putting a plan together and physically make it into something that'll work. You know what I mean? And uh, this one, this was easy, Ronnie. All I did was have to do my part. Ronnie, Ronnie spearheaded everything. Did an amazing job. Um, he got amazing video people. They did a great job. The studio he recorded stuff in was great. I record my drum, all my records at my studio here, in Florida. Um, you know, it's just a little pipeline. It was, it was really good. You know, I, I'm excited to do another one. We're having a lot of success with this. I mean, it's really going good. I, it, you know, I'm getting a lot of interest and, and, and I like it, you know, it's like, it, it, that, that means a lot too. I like the people. I like it. Well, I feel like so. there's, there's a lot of effort put behind it. I mean, Eonian records put this out. They got some great packages that you got a couple Amazing. different finals. You got the, the CD, you got t-shirts. It, it looks like there's, there's a lot of effort behind the project. Yeah, totally professional. That's what I mean. It, it, like a totally professional, great distribution. I mean, uh, we got, you know, uh, the publicist is amazing. It's it's same as Blackie. It's a, you know same guy, Michael. He's a great guy. So, you know, we're we're blessed. You know, I I'm and I I am uh, I'm bookie booking man. I book Metal Church. You know, I've, every show that Metal Church just did, I booked. You know, it went everyone went across my desk and we we you know all the details. And I booked John Beauvoir. You know, you familiar with John? Oh yeah, John. John is a dear friend, and I'm his drummer. Uh, we got a couple festivals happening, and, and we got that happening. And um, the freak show stuff is just starting to get interest, and so we're going to finesse the first few offers, and that'll set the bar for what we can and can't do. And then I have my band here in Florida, ten thousand views. We we were reactivated, and you know we've been over around about twelve, you know, over a decade now, and and we uh, got a great following here in Florida, and we play my bar uh, a bit, and it's just great. It's like it's. <laughs> it's cool it's cool man you know so um life is okay you know and i have some cool uh, uh projects coming up you know a bunch of stuff uh, everybody wants me to do everything now the the new album by freak show is so it shall be it came out on october 27th it's getting great response i think one of the strongest things on it you're, you're, you guys is multi-part harmonies uh freaking love that and like you said earlier the hooks and whatnot i mean obviously right. that's kind of the sound you were looking to go for right yeah, I mean, um, totally. When I recorded it, it was just uh, it, it, there wasn't vocals yet, so I was just I had to imagine, you know, what the what the vocals were going to do. And sometimes the vocals are handy for me, uh, syncopation wise. I'll, I'll take from the phrasing, and it and it affects my drumming and stuff. But uh, yeah, in this case, I just had the grooves, but they were such amazing grooves. Ronnie killed it, man. I mean, uh, what I, what I got what I got delivered from work with was really good. Uh, your latest single out right now is called uh, It Hurts Me, and it was written right. specifically in honor of Jeff Labar, but I feel like the whole album is sort of a love letter to Jeff and Frankie. Of course. Of course it is, yeah. I mean, um, absolutely. You know, the ironic thing about this is when I got – the day I got the call from Ronnie to do this with, De with Jeff, he called me that morning and said, hey, man, you know, that's it. You want to do a record with me and Jeff Labar? And I'm like, absolutely, dude. That afternoon is the day we got the news he died. It was just the most ironic, weird thing that happened. And uh, yeah, it was just crazy. So yeah, it's bittersweet. And I, I knew Jeff a bit. You know, we um, when he played with Eric Brittingham's band, they had a band and they played with Wasp a few times. You know, I'm a good friend with Eric. Uh, I'm in a band with Eric and uh, Reb Beach and uh, George Lynch and uh pete from from brett michael's band you know pete evick we do uh, we have a benefit band we do once in a while you know so it's kind of fun get a list of covers no rehearsal go in count them off and go not not so bad really <laughs> that's rock and roll that's rock and roll baby so when can we expect to see the first live performance of freak show i'm gonna think in the in the spring or summer you know um like i say we're just now starting to get interest in offers and uh the interest has been happening in, for a while, but now the offers are just starting to materialize and uh, it's going to be good. You know, I just think we should be smart. And, uh, you know, with a band like this, I don't want to go all by ourselves to a house of blue and see how many people we can't draw. I want to be on a bill with quiet riot, Vixen and Warren, you know what I mean? Or a slaughter and an autograph and whatever, you know, I, I don't, uh, I want to keep it safe. You know, that's what we're going to do. The soft ticket shows, you know, fairs, festivals, you know, stuff like that, events. And uh, I'm sure we'll get some uh, private, you know, stuff. That's the cool thing. Sure, he makes a real box. You know, it's like, oh, private, private function. Ooh, uh, a lot of people are making big money with that stuff. You know, 
Yeah. The guys from Skinner, the guys from Skinner go do like private performances. Just like Johnny Van Zandt all by himself goes like 50 grand or sing three songs at a party and stuff like that. You know, we're not that extravagant, but it's cool. Those guys are great, man. Skinner's still going strong. Bless their hearts after losing a lot, you know, Every- most of the people. Yeah. Yeah. It's Rick, Ricky Medlock and uh, Johnny Van Zandt are running the show now. And, uh, it's a great, they're great. They're great, good friends. And, and we, uh, I, I stay in touch. I talk to Rick once in a while. He's one of my favorite guys I've ever played with. Um, you mentioned earlier the Metal Church uh, tour was canceled. Kurt needs some uh, work done on his back. I mean, I know up here in the East Coast, you were going to be uh, introducing uh, one of our local bands up here, uh, uh, All Sinners. And uh, I was kind of. Oh, man for them man I, but i know you've played with them before oh those guys are my bros i mean you know um all of them roger the drummer and and his uncle bobby chenard and i were best friends I, i've known roger since he was a little kid you know uh bruce morrison the bass player his brother wayne morrison was my business partner and best friend for you know years and years and years until he passed a couple of years ago which i'm still uh, in denial of he's just on vacation you know it's like Man, when you lose your close, close people, it's just so brutal on you. Uh, but, yeah, All Sinners is an amazing band and great guys, and I felt terrible. Um, we had all great shows booked, man. We, we had nothing but great shows booked. It was uh, it was a shame. And we had a, a Canadian run, and that was for big money, and, and uh, I guess the ticket sales were outstanding. So, of course they were. <laughs> you know? <laughs> of course they were. The thing canceled, so. <laughs> well, you guys put out a great album, and uh, you know it is definitely interest in it. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was great. It was great, and the band this this version of the band was really good. Um, Mark Mark came in, and Mark Lopes came in and just destroyed the place. He was amazing. Um, yeah, well, ama- amazing human being too, man. I mean, of course, he was my friend from uh, from New Bedford. You know, he's one of us, and. Uh, <laughs> He came in and did everything. He was everything we could have dreamed of and more. And uh, yeah, it's unfortunate, man. We just had an amazing run. And uh, but I was there, you know, when we were traveling. I was, you know, I don't want to blow my own horn, but I was the one hanging back with Kurt and making sure he was okay. And if he couldn't get his luggage up some stairs, I'd grab it for him. And you know, I, I would, I would look out for him. He's my bro, and he's the founding member and the meat and potatoes of the band. And uh, it had been suggested, well, why don't you guys just get him a replacement? And it's like, there is, we had one rehearsal without Kurt. And I just got to say, to me, it just didn't feel like Metal Church, you know? It's like, uh, of course I want to play. But, uh, and I'm not saying that, you know, I've seen versions of Metal Church without Kurt that were, that were really good. Uh, but I'm just like, for me, uh, it wasn't an option. It just wasn't. We needed him to, we were all beat up. We just toured all year. It's like, let this guy get fixed, you know? And it might take him a minute. Because I'm not sure he wants to jump into surgery. I think he was thinking he's going to try other things. And, you know, from what I think I know about the whole thing, it's like he's going to try a bunch of shit, then he's going to go into surgery. You know what I mean? So it's going to take the year. And, um, you know, it is what it is. We had an amazing year last year, top 20 record, uh, unprecedented attendance. You know, the band made more money than it's ever made in, this, in 40 years. It was, it was amazing. It was amazing. And, um, you know, all good things have to come to an end or go on hiatus, whatever. But we, uh, you know, we, we, we love him more than we, uh, our love for him exceeds our greed. So uh, we're, on, we're on hiatus. And the thing is, there, we all have a million things to do. I mean, I, I have other stuff to do. I mean, I, my, like I said, as soon as they announced that, my, my email lit up with shit to do. And I'm like, oh, man, you know, it's like, what I want to do is see my family. You know, I hadn't, I, last year robbed me from my family a lot, you know, so I want to spend this year having more family time and, uh, you know, build the family business. You know, I got the bar down here and some, a few investment properties. I'm getting them ready for the, for the kids. When I go, you know, it's like putting together a little portfolio for the family. Well, let's, let's talk about this little bar investment, this bar that you've been walking around during the interview. It's called Stets Winkler house, I believe. And it's in Fort Myers, Florida. Yeah, well, actually, we had to drop the Winkler House name for for legal reasons, believe it or not. So it's just Stets Bar now. And it's uh, in Fort Myers, Florida, 1926 Winkler Avenue, Fort Myers, Florida, right in a uh, central location across from the Edison Mall, right on uh, 41. And uh, it's a great place. I got is There's a pub part, and then there's the uh, showroom part. So it's great. The pub's always rocking, and we got, you know, cool video games. And, and uh, yeah, we got the... Uh, 
golden tea and hold on, let's see if I can get in here. <laughs> see, there, we got the we got the gold golden tea, we got the, the silver strike bowling, and we got the very famous Iron Maiden video game. See that thing? Nice. So my little this little game room part is, is my is our pride and joy. We have so much fun in here. It's like ridiculous. My bar manager, like every day. He gets to work like a couple minutes early and me and him get in there and get on the golden tea. It's ridiculous. I'm totally a professional. It's awesome. <laughs> I, I actually have a golden tea in here. I have my really? own. Really? I do. It's it's right over you, there. You, <laughs> you devil, I love you. So then you understand the love for those stupid games? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let me see if I you can. You got to show me, don't you? Oh, you son of a gun. Look at you. <laughs> Whoa. And you got the arcade stand-up. I got the modern one that it. It's it, it it's great. It's great, right. but uh, you got the classic. Oh, so I don't have to sell you. So I, I'm only one of three golden teas in my whole area here. You know, they're the closest ones are like five, six miles each way. So I got I got I got the golden tea folks here, and we're starting to have tournaments, and it's just ridiculous. And the, we got the silver strike bowling. You know, so between the golden tea golf and the silver strike bowling, but my little game rooms just we're bumping into each other in there. It's a riot. I mean, I can't believe there's not people in there right now. It's crazy. <laughs> so your band, your ba- your local band, Ten Thousand Views plays there. Is is that the band that you and Johnny Hyatt are in together? Yes, yeah, Johnny Hyatt, and Johnny I, and I had a very successful run. We did a Howlin' Hyatt record, uh, and we uh, boy, it, it came. It, it was on Mind Snap Records, a label from Connecticut, uh, and uh, and handled by Vaughn Vaughn Artists. So we had Sony distribution. And we have Muncie from uh, uh, Skateboard Marketing work the record. And we had real, you know, Sean O'Donnell, our, was our publisher. We had real everything. We did really good with that record, shockingly. And it was just a thing that we did during lockdown to make us look like we were doing a thing. You know what I mean? It was a collection of songs we'd recorded over the years, and we declared it a record. And actually, it was pretty good, you know? And uh, so we're going to do another one. Johnny's, Johnny's one of the most talented individuals on the planet. Got amazing guitar player, amazing singer, and... Uh, you couldn't ask for a better friend. Johnny the Hyatt. Was, the album was good. I heard it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. It was surprisingly good because, you know, there, was, there, was a, there wasn't much of a buildup to it. It came across my desk, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to listen to it because it's stat. And it was freaking phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there's a couple of really good songs on there, man. You know, like, oh, God, Wrapped in Chains was a that, – that video did really, really good. What a great song. Yeah, we had Livio. I mean, <laughs> Livio was like – a star in in that uh, in that New England area. He's like he's a monster. He's one of the best singers ever. And yeah, we had great people on it. You know, Jerome, bass player, was just amazing. This black dude from from Vegas, he punked it down. Just just amazing. Michael T. Ross, my bro from from Lita. Yeah, it was great. It was a great record. And uh, and we had a bunch of tour offers, and we were going to go do stuff. I don't remember what happened, but something interrupted us. And that was kind of a big band. It was kind of expensive. It was like six or seven of us. And I'm like, oh, man, on flights and hotels. This is going to be, this is gonna be we're gonna, not going to make that much money. Uh, good to know that there's new music on the way. The, the last time I, I, I spoke with you, you mentioned you might be working with Tommy Bolin from Doro on something. Oh, we already we already did that record. Yeah. Oh, oh my God, dude. That, that record came out sick. It's so good. Oh, my God. I, I can't believe Tommy's going to go, what are you talking about this? <laughs> yeah, I should be talking about that. Yeah, the Tommy Bowling record, it's the a- NYC, you know. Um, it was me, Steve Unger, and him. Uh, we killed it. The, 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 the rhythm sections is badass. The drumming's good. It might be one of my best records, I swear. And Tommy's amazing. I can't, he blew me away. The riffs kill, and uh, I'm excited about it. And we got like three songs in a movie, I guess. I got I to gotta circle back on that. He's driving me nuts to record like one more song right now. And I'm like, we don't really need it, but I'm going to do it just to keep him happy, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, so the Tommy Bowling thing's great. Gosh, I got to remember to talk about that. <laughs> uh, are you working on anything else? Yeah, I mean, I, I got a few things up my sleeve. I'm uh, talking to uh, my buddy. My buddy Doug is a promoter from... Uh, from Australia, and and we we have a little something going on. We're going to be doing with Dave Olson, my old buddy. You know, we're we're gonna, we got a little project that we're we're gonna we're just kind of starting to verbally assemble now. We're like, yeah, sounds great, you know, type of thing. And yeah, I mean, I got a, so many maybes. I'm I'm just not sure exactly what's gonna what's gonna click. And you know, and sometimes people go, hey man, are you available to do this? And and then if I don't, you know, 
while you're thinking, Mike Portnoy gets the same call and, and jumps in there. You know, it's like, whoops. You know, it's just how life works. That guy, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to love him. You know, years ago, I didn't want to love him. And then when I met that guy, I was like, oh, God, he's awesome. What a great guy. <laughs> he's, I mean, he, was just too, he was too good to be a good guy, too. But he really is amazing, dude. I was like, God damn it. I, uh, I don't have any drummer enemies. I'm sorry. I get along with every single one. You know, I don't. I don't have any of that stuff. Well, well that's important. Yeah, no more drum wars, except for for the uh, Peace Brothers. Yeah, except yeah, except yeah, right. Yeah, I work with uh, I work with Vinny uh, on occasion at Fantasy Camp um, as a, a as a rock star counselor. It's amazing, dude, and he's great to work with. You get any really bad students in there that you just can't teach? No, no. We, we, you know what? And I've had the beginner classes, and I gotta say, no, we we find a way to make everybody participate and to the best of their abilities. And that sounds corny, but it's true. We do. We we figure it out. Um, I I became best buddies with John Moyer from Disturbed at at Fantasy Camp. We really teamed up um, and helped each other out with a uh, with a. Uh, with our campers, you know, he, he just somehow that guy, I mean, just clicked. And then we, we, uh, we had beginner bands and stuff and, and, uh, we had the best time with them. It was great, man. They're beautiful. I'm still friends with, uh, with all of them. All, all my, all my campers, I'm, I'm at least, uh, Facebook friends with and I at least, you know, interact with a little bit, you know, I'm a horrible friend. Uh, I don't stay in touch with people. I wish I did. did. Did anybody graduate to the beer bottle and saran wrap? No, I, that's, I'm, I'm, ex- no, <laughs> It's so funny. No one's done either of those, man. And every <laughs> once in a while, I check beer bottle. I Google beer bottle drum solo, and I'm the only one that ever comes up. You know, I can't believe, you know, someone didn't, you know, to take it further, you know. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've had a lot of a lot of luck with that. It's, it's fun. I'm a lot better at it than I used to be. I can flip those things around. I don't I'm barely drop them. I never break them anymore, knock on wood. Hold on. <laughs> it's an ice machine, but it could be wood. Uh, yeah, the, the, the beer bottle thing's a trip. Stat, it sounds like you got a lot going on, and I'm glad that you could take a moment to speak with knac.com to talk about Freak Show's latest album, So It Shall Be, out now on e- Eonian Records. Yeah, I got to tell you, man, it's so great to, when I, I've been doing a ton of interviews lately, you know, because all the stuff that's going on, and I was looking, I saw oh, KNAC, that's so cool. And then I looked even closer, and I saw your name. I was like, shut up. That's my bro, man. I was really looking forward to this all day, man. I'm, 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 it's nice to see your face again and talk to you. And now that I know you're there, I'll let you know when I come down to Wareham, we'll get together. I tell your story a lot. I mean, I, I've, I've actually told our story in, in, in a recent interview uh, a couple times because people talked about the Red Island Fire, and I was like, well. And I, and I tell, you know, it's like my, my dear friend, his account, his written account of that was so moving that it, 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 it turned him into a journalist, you know? And then, and it was, yeah, I did, that was, that moved me, man. When I read that piece you wrote about that, I, I it, it was amazing. It was, it was great. I mean, it was a horrible thing, but the way you put it together was unbelievable. And it was tragic, you know? And we all lost somebody in there. I, I, we all knew somebody that, that didn't make it out of there. It was, it was terrible. Thank God it's, 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 you know, it, it's past and, you know, I, yeah. I, you know, you can, you can live a little bit with that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's part of my journey, right? It totally is, man. It totally is. I, I feel so bad. I see though, I see that video once in a while and I see my friend Ty, the guitar player from great white, go, go stage right. And it's like, no brother stage left. You know, it's like that simple mistake cost him his life. It's, 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 it's terrible. I ran it. I, I ran. I ran it. I ran the station nightclub fire through Google, and the first picture that comes up, it's me. I'm trying to pull really? the door, and I'm like, uh, I, gotta, I can't run this name. I can't run that at, through Google anymore. Right. Oh wow. Yeah. I mean, I when, when, Jack when, Russell recently too. So Jack's great, man. Jack's a good guy. Actually, I they had a drummer. Cha- they were in need of a drummer for a minute, and I got a call, and I was I talked to uh, the bass player about it a little bit, but we're schedules weren't really working out and stuff and they ended up getting someone really great i can't remember and mary or something yeah yeah i think it is yeah that's awesome ken's great i love that guy well and- man keep up the good work it was good catching up with you and i'm sure you'll have another project we'll be talking about again oh yeah i'm i'm, a, I'm busy as be over here man. if i ever it's get down to the phone, i will stop in please do brother first handful of drinks are on me sir
All right, and you got to play me in Golden Tee. I will play you in Golden I got to. I just started playing again. I hadn't played in years. We just got the machine in a few days ago, and uh, <laughs> I got the high score. I was like, oh, no, because, you know, I own the bar. I don't want to have high scores in any of the games. It's like, yeah, of course he has because he owns the place. But uh, I accidentally got high school in the Golden Tee, so I got I to gotta go get my ass kicked or something. But I'm sure you get me. You got one at your house. You devil. That's amazing. <laughs> All right, man. I'll catch up with you All later. Right, George. All right, my brother. Take care.